Hello, and welcome back to episode number three of Grand Tactician's Civil War. We are playing as the Confederacy, and we just won our first battle here down in Manassas against the Union Army of General McDowell. Um, we did have 21% casualties on both sides just because our army was smaller than his but we also had some generals who had to get changed out as well so the first one that we had to change out was Edward Johnson uh, Edward Johnson this was his brigade it was now Colston's brigade but he had to be replaced because he was defamed and defamed really lowers the morale of troops I believe so we have to get him out of there so unfortunately Edward Johnson won't be seeing much of him anymore and that's a real shame because usually I like to promote him uh, up to a division command later in the war and the other commander who we had to change was um, Nathaniel Evans uh, one of the commander of the New Orleans Legion we had to change him out for uh, Blanchard here because he was actually wounded so um, Evans led his bat led his men into battle and was actually wounded at the Battle of First Manassas in this uh, historical game here. And the other thing we have done, just a couple changes here and there, is we added another brigade, Pettigrew's Brigade of North Carolinians, to um, the Sharpshooter Division here. Now they're not sharpshooters, but I'm giving them just some extra backup, just in case we get into the thick of it again, so we can get another regiment. I mean. We were, we were really struggling for uh, brigades during that last battle. Now the other things I've done is I added a, another brigade of uh, South Carolinians here to uh, B's, brigade, B's division. And they have David R. Jones commanding them. So hopefully we can get the army of Shenandoah up and running sometime in the near future, other than with just four brigades. And going through, clicking through the uh, armies here, that is really the only changes I've made. And I, and I added these two regiments uh, on the video for last time. So we can go ahead it is now July 14th 1861 and we're, what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and start the game again a disaster for the Union because they lost at first Manassas federal volunteers skedaddle so there we go and now we have to wait for Beauregard has 2,000 men disabled just because of these wounds just because they're wounded so we gotta get we have to wait for 2,000 men to be unwounded now in the meantime kind of worried for the army of the northeast or northwest over here because they had uh, the army of occupation coming down and it looks like they have come down they've taken Beverly oh there's the army of occupation here so it looks like they're coming to try to fight uh, Johnston's army here in Winchester here we go so 9,000 men versus 6,000 men, we should win this one pretty easily. It is July 23rd, 1861 at the moment now. So what we're going to do is we're going to play battle. So we have General George McClellan versus General Joe Johnston uh, here at the Battle of Winchester, the second major conflict of the Civil War. Well, I wouldn't call this major conflict. I would call the last battle that we had at First Manassas a major conflict. This one... Um, Obviously, we won't have the casualties as we did at first Manassas, but we'll have uh, we'll have enough. Too many casualties 
in the Civil War. The technology was just way too advanced for their tacticians back then. All right, so here we are. We are on the Winchester battle map, and looks like the Federals are coming from the uh, Northwest Turnpike here on this road along the uh, into the town of Winchester. And what I would honestly like to do, I'd like to get my forces right up here, and hopefully, like, get on either side of this hill and stop them from entering Winchester. That would be ideal. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on Johnston, make sure everybody's long range. And we're going to come down right on this uh, Millwood Pike Road. Kind of put everybody in line behind each other. And Jackson's division will be on the right side of the Pie Ridge here, and then uh, B's division will be on the left side of Apple Pie Ridge, with the artillery also spanning out either way. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit play. We're going to bring Johnston. Not going to put him directly on the ridge. Same thing with Jackson. Then we're going to move Pelham. Put him on that side of the ridge. And then we're going to move Pendleton. And we'll put him on this side of the ridge. And of course, Jeb Stewart's cavalry. They can come over here and attempt to flank or at least uh, kind of screen over this way. So we're going to fast forward this up to times 10 as our troops go off and our general following orders. At least I'm really hoping they're going to come down this road here. What makes sense, it's the main road. There's an objective point here that we don't have, so hopefully they'll think about taking it. And the artillery is going to get into position first. Going to give them bombardment orders so the their experience goes up while they fight. I'm doubting that they'll get a whole lot of experience in this during this battle, but and here we go. We have spotted the enemy. We'll move Stuart closer to the fight here. They're sending skirmishers out. As Pelham, Pelham starts to open up on him. Move Jackson up some more. Same thing with Bartow. Move them up so the artillery can shoot. And suddenly it's the end of the day. Alrighty, so at the end of the day, we can start, we can redeploy our armies to wherever we uh, want them, our troops to wherever we want them. But honestly, I think we're just going to sit nice and happy where we are currently. Uh, we have plenty of room here to attempt and flank the army. We have, I think we have the advantage here. Well, I mean... Obviously, we have the advantage because we have them outnumbered. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit times two. 
and here comes the Federals. They're going to start advancing with their skirmishers, and they're going to be met by the volleys of our troops. Here we go. Skirmishers are being hit by the volleys from our troops. For some reason, the Pelham is not uh, firing. Maybe we should move him more up the, up the ridge a little bit. thing with Baldwin. We're going to move Baldwin up and we're starting to cause casualties so we're just going to keep advancing here. We're going to advance right into the lines of these skirmishers. Right up on top of them. Get them to fall back. And we're going to dismount Stewart here because we have a bunch of, because we have a couple of, uh, we have a brigade actually veering off here towards Stuart. So what we're going to do is get him behind the stone wall here. And hopefully with these carpets he can hold off for a few minutes. And Kirby Smith's going to go off in this direction to help Stuart. Well, Baldwin keeps advancing. And Garnett is still all right, and Barto is still all right. We want them to really get into position on our artillery across the way here. So we want them to move up a little bit more and get up there, boys. Get up there, Stonewall Brigade. about to uh, lose all of his men, so we're going to cause him to retreat. Looks like he did not hold out as well as I thought he was going to. So he is in full retreat as Kirby Smith comes to the rescue of the cavalry. up, Arto. You too, Baldwin. Get up there, Kirby. Doesn't seem like our artillery is going to do any with the wise artillery. It doesn't seem like it's going to shoot any longer. We're almost at a stage of victory here. Stuart is okay. He did not run away, which is good. And the enemy is retreating, so that is awesome. So we won our second battle, this one not as large. We're going to put it on times 10 so we can get the uh, enemy the heck out of here. Kirby Smith's going to run up and just charge right into the, this uh, brigade over here. So good for Kirby Smith. And he's actually unstable now. And he broke! He broke! Kirby Smith, he broke! He broke into that unit. That unit's not even running away. It's unstable. Ours is broken. Are you kidding me right now? Wow. Kirby Smith has the uh, stats to be one of the better generals in the game and he broke I can't believe that <laughs> wow I just can't believe he broke alright so we have we won despite Kirby Smith breaking 
Uh, we only suffered about 500 casualties, and they suffered 1,000 casualties. So, as expected, we kind of, uh, you know, really let them have it. We had a little bit of a superior firepower there with uh, Jackson's division. I gave them rifle muskets, so their range is a little bit longer. What we're going to do is we're going to quit our battle. And I would not be surprised if uh, Kirby Smith is now defamed because of that. That is... <laughs> that is absolutely crazy that that happened. Uh, that was incredible. Kirby Smith is defamed because he, he charged into the unit that was retreating, but yet broke. Ah... Uh, but yet broke. Yeah, look at that. Brigade General Smith has fallen to disgrace in the eyes of his men in public. Oh my goodness gracious. So it sounds to me like we're going to have to replace Kirby Smith now. Because he is defamed. Oh, he was going to be an eventual, maybe, army commander, at least a division commander. He's not going to be that anymore, I don't think. Because he's now defamed. I can't believe that, man. Wow, that was, that was nuts. We won with two to one casualties, and Smith still has... <laughs> still freaking falls back and retreats. Can't believe that. That is the craziest thing I have ever seen. Yeah, look at that. Defame and his stats are much worse now. Uh, having failed the nation or been demoted from command, leaving this officer in command will do more harm than good for the morale of the people. His men will question his abilities and he is considered a laughingstock in the enemy camps. So yeah, we can't have that. I mean, I would laugh at the face of his, at the face of him. So we have to go and find another Tennessee commander. I know if I was the enemy, I would certainly be laughing after that performance put up by uh, Smith. All right, let's see here. Uh, I've always liked uh, William Bate as a commander. It's it's unfortunate that he's politically assigned. Uh, that just means that the state support will go up when he uh, is in command, but when you demote him or give him a different assignment, he'll automatically lose some support from different states. And I wish they would uh, do, some, do a little bit of more work with the politically assigned stuff and even promoting and demoting generals. I wish you could, and now that we have a button to actually promote generals, I wish we could demote generals well as well. So every time we look in here and see if uh, Donaldson, I don't want to really put Donaldson in charge of anything. I just want to demote him all the way down to a lieutenant. And that way, I won't have to put him in charge of anything. But, uh, and then, uh, the other thing that's really grinding my gears is Nathaniel Forrest here. There's no cavalry commander on his uh, profile. There should be a cavalry command on his profile. But anyways, that's the, that's, I'm just, you know, sweating the little things. And same thing with uh, Edward Porter Alexander. There's no artillery. There's, he's an engineer, not an artillerist. But he should be an artillerist, not an engineer. But, you know, anyways, it's the little things that I'm grinding right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on William Bate in charge of the uh, Kirby Smith's old division. Not division, excuse me, brigade. Make sure it it went through and it did and we have to rename because uh, I didn't go through this time Bates Brigade all right so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to move through time here and the army of occupation is uh, leaving us now which is nice goodbye army of occupation and we're gonna move um, Johnston more into the town of Winchester, like right in the center of town. It changes the uh, map, battle map placement every once in a while, but not a whole lot. Alright, the Great Johnson Revolution 
bill to preserve the Union, no action against slavery, bill has been, bill passes almost unanimously. Let's check everything here out west, make sure it's all going a-okay. We still have the Army of Indiana out here still being formed. Army of the West still being formed, it looks like, out here as well. So nobody is advancing on anybody, which is nice. Disaster at Galvington. One ship captured. Captured one of our ships. Uh, the block, One of the blockading squadrons came in and decided to uh, pay us a little visit down in Galveston. All right. That is fine. U.S. Navy is commandeering civilian ships. We gotta get some ships going of our own. I know I said I wasn't going to start a fleet, but with everything that's going on now, especially with the uh, stuff like that, we really have to get something going. Um, we'll build some... Let's see, what are we gonna build though? What can we build? We can't really build a whole lot. Um, we'll definitely get a few brigs going, because those are relatively cheap. And supply. Let's see, and then we want some river stuff. We want some nice uh, river. We want some nice river boats here. Maybe a couple fourth-rate steamers. For the uh, moment. Okay, so that's going to be it for now for our Navy. And our Navy's not going to be a lot. How are they blockading us? How well are they blockading us? Uh, they're blockading us uh, almost about. 50% across the board. That's not great. So, okay, we have industrialization. We have that new policy here, so that's nice. So that's a new policy, and what we're going to do after that is we are going to get the next industrialization policy. We're going to go to finances here. We're going to rise up trade warfare and of course our industrially industry might have to check on that in a few days make sure everything is going okay so it's now august 7th 1861 the first initial conflicts of the war both in the valley and uh in manassas went in the confederate favor Gonna take a look at here at the finances and it's raining out. We want industry to move up a little bit more. And we'll put uh, 150 into trade war. There we go. 150 into trade war. Very, very quiet out here on the Western Front. The Army of Indiana kind of scares me a little bit because we don't have the men, uh, we don't have nearly the amount of men that we should to uh, stop them. What is this? Fort Pulaski? I don't want Fort Pulaski. 
I want the Army of the Tennessee, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new division, not going to be under Polk, it's going to be under Cheatham. And let's see, do we have enough folks here? We kind of have enough folks, but that is, that's okay. What we're going to do... We'll recruit a brigade from Georgia. We'll recruit a brigade from Kentucky. And we'll recruit a brigade from... Oh, I don't know. Not Maryland. Uh, not North Carolina, because we're in the West. Uh, we'll do Louisiana. So, in for the Georgia Brigade, we're going to put... George T. Anderson in charge of that Georgia Brigade. For the Kentucky Brigade, we're going to take... We're not going to put Ewell in charge of that one. But we will put Breckenridge in charge of that one. And for the Louisiana Brigade, we're not going to put Sibley in charge of that either. We're going to put... Mound in charge of it. Sure, why not, Mound? Need an engineering brigade in that one as well. So, okay, there we go. There's that one. So, a little bit stronger in the west, just in case the Army of the Tennessee decides to move, which it is moving. But it's moving east and north. So, that's very interesting. Oh, we have a wounded man back, so this should be Nathaniel Evans, and yes, Colonel Evans has recovered from his wounds during First Manassas and is returning to duty. And that took him about, oh, about a month or so to heal from his wounds, so he is back now. But I think we'll just stick with um, Walton. I think we put, I don't know, we put Blanchard in charge of the New Orleans Legion. We'll leave Blanchard in charge. It's okay. So how's the wounded situation going? He still has a thousand wounded, almost 500 sick. Oh, the Department of Pennsylvania is coming in and bam, look at that. Suddenly it is going to be an 18,000 man uh, invasion force under... It looks like uh, the Department of Pennsylvania, but it looks like overall commander is George McClellan, who I don't think is in charge of the Department of Pennsylvania. Does it say here? No, he's in current command of the Army of Occupation still. Versus our Army of the Shenandoah, who we just saw in action. So, alright. Let's, uh... So, we'll save this for another video, but uh, thank you all for watching. And please like, subscribe, share your share this video if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for episode number four, where we decide uh, to take on George McClellan again with the Army of Shenandoah, but this time he's brought him back up with his Department of Pennsylvania. All right, guys, thank you so much. Bye.